Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of the Bobby Bone Show. You know, you've been doing a lot of touring uh, with this uh, latest album that you came out with last year, Urban Driftwood. And, and you and I were talking before we started the interview. Watching your videos, Yasmin, is kind of mesmerizing in, in all of the different, you know, you're almost like a, a drummer in all the different, you know, angles and everything that yeah. you're playing the guitar on your lap. You got tap shoes on. <laughs> you got new instruments like the Cora. How did all this evolve with you? Honestly, it's hard to say. I really just like experimenting and finding new things to do with the guitar and new techniques and also just learning new instruments is another like love of mine. But really, it just started with playing the guitar in the kind of lap style um, that I use or lap tapping style, I guess, is the name of it. Right. And um, yeah, once I figured that out, guitar became kind of instead of just one instrument, it became 10, really. Um, <laughs> I mean, you can play the guitar like a drum since it's made out of wood and you can, it can be a melodic instrument, it can be rhythmic like a piano almost, it can be whatever you envision it to be. And adding instruments on top of that, like the kalimba that I literally put on top of it or learning other instruments to play along with the guitar, um, it's, it just makes it fun for me. I mean, guitar is super multidimensional and I want to showcase that yeah. as much as I can. Well, you know, I think you do so well with it. I remember some of the early images I saw with you uh, you know, a few years ago uh, with your harp guitars, you mm -hmm. know, when, you know, because a lot of people are kind of intimidated by those where you've got the bass strings on <laughs> yeah. top and the standard guitar strings on the bottom. <laughs> and of course, with you, you take that to another level by playing it on your lap and playing <laughs> both those. And then yeah. with, with the tap, you know, you've, you've got your feet going for percussion. Yeah. And then all the other things. And it's like, and, and you just, it's mesmerizing. Thanks. I mean, I kind of have to be a one woman band, really. I don't have a band right now. And uh, it's just easier <laughs> to be solo at the moment. Um, but no, I mean, it's I love pushing the boundaries of guitar and um, just exploration really is the most fun thing for me to do. And luckily, guitar is so uh, multifaceted that it makes it really easy, um, even though harp guitar looks scary. And it kind of is, to be honest, I can't <laughs> lie. Um, it's not for the faint of heart, but once no. you get a hang of it, it, it's really fun. And it just adds even more to what you already know about guitar. So, I mean, and you've got videos for, for all these great songs on your album and, and all the different instrumentals. And so many of them, you know, I, I would start listening and just, you know, uh, you want to add them to your playlist, you know, because mm -hmm. they're, you know, you're moving through the melodies and then also watching you with the hammer on the strings also, yeah, you know, yeah. as you're doing chording and melodies with your left hand. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're making this sound super complex. And to me, it's just kind of like, a, I mean, whatever. It's just something I figured out um, kind of on the fly a little bit. It's not really, I don't know. For that hammer in particular, I was just looking for something to make the guitar sound like a hammer dulcimer, which is another instrument I really like. And that mm -hmm. was the only thing I could find that could do that. So it's, it, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I wondered where you found that because, you know, you start out using that with the hammer, like a hammer dulcimer, and then yeah. you have to put that in your lap because then you're back to your fingers. Yeah. I mean, that's the main, that's the tricky thing with it. It's a lot of transitioning on my part, like putting the mm -hmm. guitar kind of up and then putting it down in my lap and bringing it back up. I practice that more than anything else. <laughs> yeah. It's just amazing. Well, and I wanted to bring up too for our viewers that don't know you as well to where, you know, you really began playing uh, guitar at eighth grade, but you yeah. got to tell me about this, you know, so it was after you beat Guitar Hero yeah. 2 at the expert level. Yeah. And that was your motivation. That was, that's the reason I'm here today. Um, that's literally like beating that game and just, just playing the game. I feel like I would have started playing guitar whether I beat it or not, but beating it gave me the confidence boost I needed to eventually asked my parents for one and they bought me one. Um, and that's why I started playing guitar. And the game really exposed me to a lot of rock music that I just wasn't exposed to as much growing up, which was really cool to me as an angsty 12 year old, kind of moody preteen. I love that stuff. And I wanted to learn how to play it. And that's kind of where the journey began for me. And eventually I moved on to acoustic guitar and more complex stuff, I guess, than like the typical power chords or whatever I was playing in eighth grade. But um, right. yeah, it's, it's been a weird journey, I think, but really cool. <laughs> well, and also, I mean, you, you did your first EP uh, when you were only in 10th grade. 
Yeah, that was really fun. Um, that was a very difficult process because I didn't know anything about recording or mixing or anything. And I had to learn how to do yeah. that. Um, shout out to my teacher in high school for teaching me that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, that was like, once I did that, I kind of knew that, okay, I do want to do something in music in the future. This is just way too much fun to not want to do as a job, quote unquote job. Um, right. But it was years later that I figured out like, okay, I can actually do this and have a career, you know, but that was the catalyst for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, and to me too, you know, and certainly with, you know, as gifted as you are, Yasmin, to where, you know, it's so nice to see somebody taking instrumental music and really bringing a new dimension to it. And so that it's more accessible to people. And like mm -hmm. we were talking, I don't make it, want to make it sound overly complex, but you are very gifted with everything that Thank you're you. doing on there. And I'm looking <laughs> going, wow, I'd be good to play a strong A chord and look at what Yasmin's doing. <laughs> and, but I mean, I think also with your music and also with your videos, you know, I like how you uh, encompass the outdoors and it shows mm -hmm. you, you know, out hiking and out in these beautiful, you know, uh, country landscapes. And uh, mm -hmm. the, the music is just so peaceful and moving also. Thank you. I mean, that's a huge, nature is a huge inspiration to me. It's kind of where I can feel at peace. And when city life, since I, I live in a city and, and usually in cities touring or something around the country, around the world. Right. Um, Nature is definitely a respite and I want my music to be calming for people and to kind of put them in a zone where they don't have to worry about daily struggles or whatever they might be going through for 30 minutes or 40 minutes or however long they want to listen to the album. Um, yeah. And I mean, that's why I wrote it for myself and I wrote it for others hoping they could also get that out of it. And I guess people are, which is great. Um, but yeah, nature is huge for me and it's definitely a calming thing. And that transfers to my music. Um, even if, the song itself is about less quote unquote calming topics, like, right. you know, political divisiveness or social injustice or whatever. Certainly. Which, which I think, you know, your music provides vehicles for all that. I wanted to bring up too, you have a featured guest on the title track mm -hmm. for urban driftwood as well. And, and I love the, uh, the added rhythms and everything, which you always yeah. bring those, you know, by yourself alone. But to yeah, have your thanks. guest on too. Yeah, my friend Amadi Piate is amazing. He's like a master djembe player, master kumar player. And wow. he was gracious enough to, yeah, he's, what, what is he, 150th generation kumar player or something. It's, and he was gracious enough to be on the record and play drums. And he impro improvised all of that in about three takes and it was done. But um, <laughs> yeah, he was an incredible addition. And I, uh, yeah, I love him dearly. Um, I'm, that definitely elevated the track, his drum playing, for sure. Well, I want to bring up, too, you know, with all of the touring and everything you've been doing with this uh, most recent album, uh, you're going to be playing at the Pilgrimage Festival uh, in Franklin, yes. Tennessee on September 24th and 25th. So you got to be pretty excited about that as super, well. Super, super excited for that. Super, super excited. It'll be my first time there, too, and I've wanted to go to Pilgrimage for a while now. So I'm very stoked. <laughs> Well, you know, and, and are you constantly, you know, I'm sure you're, you're always writing new music and working on your next album and your next releases mm -hmm. and all that, even though Urban Driftwood has done so well. And I've got to brag on you, you know, with uh, rave reviews from Rolling Stone, NPR, you <laughs> know, you. Pace Magazine, all these other, you know, and just besides the Rock and Review raving about you, you've had a lot of accolades. Are you working on new material and everything for your next album? And oh, Absolutely. Um, funnily enough, I just got a new guitar yesterday, a new electric guitar with some custom pickups in it um, that I posted on social media. It looks great. Uh, <laughs> and thank you to Gibson for sending it to me. So that'll be on my next record. And um, yeah, I'm writing a lot of music recently. I, I don't know how long this next record's going to be. I'm going to have to throw some things out probably. Um, but I'm, <laughs> I'm really excited at the direction it's going in. I'm sure there will be guests more guests than there were on Urban Driftwood. Um, it'll definitely provide a different perspective on my musicality, but I think people will still know it's me and will still have me in it, but just a different direction, yeah. I think. Well, and I think like any artist, you know, you've got to grow and, and exactly. you, even within yeah. this last album, you know, you see the yeah. growth in these songs and everything that you keep adding on. You know, at, at some point, it's almost like a magic show, Yasmin, where you're going to have to have somebody off the <laughs> side stage handing you things, you know? <laughs> at this point, yeah, that's what I'm worried about. I mean, especially with ideas I have now, it's, I, I'm going to have to have a handler or an instrument handler to just hand me instruments on stage. And 
I don't know how I'm going to do this, but it will get done. <laughs> I'm sure it will. And I, we can't wait to see you at the Pilgrimage Festival on September 24th and 25th. But I want to make sure for our viewers that with your uh, with your album, you know, out and your videos and with everything else you're doing and your full tour, where are the best places for them to find you on social media and the web? Definitely my website, yasminwilliamsmusic.com is great. Also Instagram. I'm on Instagram at guitar.yazyz and Twitter. I'm pretty active on there. Uh, Facebook, pretty much anywhere. Um, you can go YouTube. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I, once again, I just love your music and I can't wait to hear the new music you release in the next year or so, but this album, uh, can't get enough of it. Thank you, you so know, much. Uh, I mean, with, with urban driftwood and, uh, can't wait to see you live. Uh, <laughs> thank Yasmin you. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Yasmin. Thank you so much for having me. It was a great time. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bones show. 